sorry, I feel like Iron Man with so much technology <laughs> all over me. Um, I'd like to start off this talk uh, with getting personal immediately, if I may. I'd like to ask anyone in the audience, have you watched the movie Back to the Future? Please raise your hand, not that I can see <laughs> with the lights. But I do see some shadows uh, along the back there. Now, if you haven't watched it, you are forgiven. It's an older movie, and I'm kind of giving away my age a little bit now. But it's about a young man named Marty McFly, and he added to his disposal a time machine. Imagine that. Time machine, you can travel backwards in time and forwards in time, and you can see the future. Now, in my profession as an actuary, it's our job to try and look into the future, as, as if we could, and try to mitigate as many risks as possible. And I try and apply these various different skills into the CSI realm. Now, many of you are looking at me saying CSI, and I can actually see the theme song going on from the series, Qu Crime Scene Investigation, right? Right? has nothing to do with that. It actually stands for Corporate Social Investment. And it's about the actual tangible impact that we make in society using the resources that we have to make those kinds of impacts. But back to the back, back to the back to the future movie. I'd love for you to pretend that you had such a time machine. And I'd love for you to look 10 years into the future. Let's go crazy. Go 20 years into the future and you live in South Africa. What do you see? Is it positive? Negative? Maybe, I don't know. Two weeks ago, we most likely would have said that we have quite a negative outlook of where we are heading as a people, as a united front, and as a country. Two days ago, maybe that would have changed, and now we would replace that with a massive question mark. We have no idea what to expect until last night's sonar, and it might sound even more optimistic. Who knows? But I tell you, unless our new president, Cyril Ramaphosa, understands the concept of what the word partnership means, and unless each and every single one of us understand what the word partnership means, interpret that word any way you like, we will not be able to shape the future of our country together as a united front. Now, speaking of partnerships, and the more talks, if you, if you do have a chance of listening more about me later in the future, you'll know that I'm going to start sharing personal stories. Uh, I love sharing stories from my life. And I'd love to share a story about well, a few years ago. Uh, I'm going to be honest, quite a few years ago, um, more than I'd like to share. I went to my local Bible study. And before the Bible study began, we had a bit of a social. Now, during the social, around the corner came this young woman. It was like one of those romantic comedies that you watch, right? That the young man is, oh, sorry, not young man, the man is <laughs> sitting at a coffee shop somewhere and around the corner comes this beautiful woman and the hair is blowing in slow motion. She's walking, everything is perfect. I'm looking stupid because I, I just don't know how to respond to this. Now, back to Bible study. The, the lady comes around the corner and is walking in slow motion to, towards the group of people. It became my sole mission in life that night that I had to speak to this woman. You can see my priorities were... <laughs> <laughs> had to speak to this woman. And while I'm thinking in my head of how am I going to address this woman, how am I going to walk up, how am I going to get the confidence to walk up to this woman, a friend of mine calls me and says, Ryan, come over here. He's standing next to this girl. And I can't believe my lucky stars. This guy who was a moderate friend at the stage was now my best friend. <laughs> She's standing there with my friend and now I'm walking all excited and getting ready to, to achieve the goal that I set out for myself at the beginning of that evening. And then just before I get to her, I realize, but what am I going to say when I get to her? You know, it's one thing getting the opportunity and the next actually doing something with it. And I'm not the best in the looks department, so I'm going to have to bring something else to this. So humor, I don't know, what? So when I get to her, you know, I'm thinking, well, maybe I can talk about, I can talk about religion. We're at Bible study, that, that's appropriate. Maybe when I get to I can talk about sports. In the history of mankind and dating, that probably wasn't the best thing to ever <laughs> go and try and do, is talk about sports. But no, of all the millions of things that I could have said, I went to her and came to her with a big smile and started talking to her about maths. <laughs> I did say I was an actuary, right? To me, it felt like a good thing, I don't know. Talk about maths. And you know, by some miracle, this actually worked. 
you know, we got her talking about maths because she was doing a gap year that year and wanted extra maths. Believe my luck. Opportunity solution. <laughs> it's interesting how from that day on a beautiful partnership began from seemingly two different people that you wouldn't have automatically thought they would have worked together. Now I want to explain what the word partnership means by explaining what it's not. Partnerships is not where one party dictates terms to the other. No. It's not when one party says to the other, listen, buddy, you get me this time and next time I got you. Next time, you know, I got your back. Partnership is when both entities come together with a common goal, with different skill sets, different contacts, different connections, various different things, and they use these various different skill sets to achieve the goal that they are trying to actually achieve. That's what a partnership is. That young lady I spoke about earlier, I'm very proud to say we celebrated our fourth wedding anniversary in December last year. You can clap now. <laughs> and she truly, really is my partner. But let's bring it back to South Africa and what our new president's challenge is in the next years to come. Partnerships is going to be crucial for shaping the future of South Africa. And I personally would want to recommend from my experience in CSI that the, co the partnership between corporate SA and the social entrepreneurial sector is key. That is something that can shape the future. Now, those of you who are unfamiliar with the concept of social entrepreneurs, they are ordinary entrepreneurs, either profit-seeking or non-profit-seeking. However, focus on trying to alleviate a social ill within our country, or in the world for that matter. For, as an example, in our country, crime. An organization that's focused on trying to decrease crime would be a social entrepreneur trying to provide new means of getting water to the Western Cape. That would be a fantastic entrepreneur, wouldn't it? That is a social entrepreneur. Now, focusing on these two partners, let's see where we are currently in Corporate SA. Corporate SA, once upon a time, in 1994, where things changed for the dramatic better. Government encouraged Corporate SA to start investing into the entrepreneurial development market specifically focusing on previously disadvantaged people. Fantastic idea. That is great. Let's move further on into the future, 2003, when the Triple BE legislation was brought into effect. Also focusing on underprivileged markets, previously disadvantaged people in the entrepreneurial sector, encouraging companies to spend 1% to 2% of net profit after tax into these organizations. Again, great idea. Fantastic. It is a tangible difference that can be made. Pushing on to 2014, and let's even skip 2014 and say that if corporate South Africa continue to spend and invest into the entrepreneurial sector, by the year 2020, we're going to be looking at about 8 billion rand, sorry, 15, sorry, 15 billion rand being spent into the entrepreneurial sector per annum. 15 billion rand. Can you imagine what you could do with 15 billion rand? After I go do every single thing selfishly I can imagine to do for myself, imagine what, you could, what good you could be doing with 15 billion rand per annum. Unfortunately, if we take a hard look at our country right now, that is not necessarily evident. And you know how I know this? It's because in, if I look at some stats, yes, again, actually, there was only so long before I was going to bring some graphs into this uh, discussion. <coughs> if I look at some stats, I can see that only 11% of adults within South Africa between the working ages of 16 to 65 are inclined to start their own business. 11%. Now this stat would mean very little unless we compare it to something else, right? And usually we compare this to, I don't know, first world countries, and, but uh, that doesn't really make any sense because we're not on the same economic level right now with our Americas and the Europe's of the world. So I want to compare this with the rest of Africa, excluding South Africa. 39% of people aged 16 to 65 are inclined to start their own business. What went wrong? Why can we say that 15 billion rand will be invested per annum into the entrepreneurial sector, completely focused on previously disadvantaged? And this is the picture that we see currently. 
well, where is this money going? Is the money going to the places that it's supposed to be going to? If we look at the newspapers, that's shown in almost every single way possible. In government, in companies, money doesn't go where it's supposed to. It gets magically lost. Lost to where we will never know. This is the reality that we're facing. Now, I have some colleagues in, in, in the UK, also in the CSI space, and I read an article from one of their magazines titled, How Does Corporates Partner Up With Social Entrepreneurs? And they suggested four models. Four models that I can confirm, I can see in my experience here in South Africa. One is the EFT approach. And we all know this one, yes. When we all feel guilty about not making a difference in the world, we go find a charity and we push a button. We send that EFT and we feel better about ourselves, don't we? We sit there thinking, oh, I made, it, I made it such a difference. I'm going to go sleep peacefully tonight because I am the beginner of change within South Africa. The other model involves big corporates not actually doing their own CSI, but actually hiring a CSI consultant to come in and then go and do some good in the various communities that we have surrounding us here in South Africa. No one from the corporate gets out of their desk to go and do this good, but we hire somebody else to do it for us. Wow, we create people. Amazing, isn't it? Thirdly, you have involvement in procurement. So procurement means that you get the services of social entrepreneurs to be provided to your corporate in the form of catering, I guess it can be cleaning, anything that you can think of that a company would want to get external services for, corporates would do that but focus on these social entrepreneurs. And then fourthly is skill sharing. Now this links very tightly to that concept of partnerships that I spoke about earlier today. It means that one partner being the corporate the other partner being the social entrepreneur, understanding that they have two different networks, understanding that they have different skill sets, but understanding that together they can actually achieve various goals that they never thought they could actually achieve. And this leads into a concept of what shared value actually is. Not a new concept in the world, by the way, but it doesn't seem like South Africa has completely come to grips with what shared value really means. The Triple B legislation that I spoke about earlier today, and um, that came from 2003, it's a great idea. It's needed. However, what the Triple B E legislation does promote from a corporate perspective is that this much should be done and this much should be spent into our entrepreneurial sector. Now, if I think back to when I was younger and in my mother's household, my mom used to tell me, Ryan, go clean your room. And of course, I with a big smile went to go clean, no. <laughs> I went reluctantly to go clean my room, I cleaned it. But then the last thing that I would do is go say, mom, come look, come look at my room. Just look, behold, look at it. It's gorgeous, it's clean, right? You know what, that went so fast, I'm gonna go clean the dishes now as well. And after that, I'm gonna go next door and I'm gonna mow the lawn of Jerry. You remember Jerry? Great guy, right? That's the last thing we're going to do. And the same thing applies when it comes to this concept of partnerships and shared value. The Chul B legislation says you should do, encourages companies that you should do this much. When actually what is needed by corporate SA is this much and actually beyond. If we really think about what shared value means, CSI or any kind of impact that you make in the communities of South Africa is no longer about going to go, oh, I'm going to go paint a wall. I'm going to go plant a tree. I'm going to do these things so that at the end of the day, I feel better about myself. It's about making a long lasting impact in society with the people of South Africa, understanding that we have differences, but partnering up for the greater good. And businesses to understand that CSI is a long term investment. It's about partnering up now, and if we really do our jobs right from a corporate essay point of view, 20 years from now, the entrepreneurs that we are serving now, should they not be our future clients in 20 years from time from now? Should that not have uplifted the economy? 
If education is our focus, if we really focus on the young people of today, grade ones, twos, and threes, and we put that long-term investment slash partnership into effect, not just pushing the EFT, but getting people out of the offices, involved in people's lives, 12 years from now, 12 to 15 years, should these kids not be the future employees of our companies? That is what shared value is about. Now, as a <coughs> Sorry, I am older than what I sound. <laughs> As I conclude, this talk wasn't about by some miracle an actuary got to marry his dream woman who was a nurse. This talk is not actually even about how corporate SA can partner up with social entrepreneurs to shape the future of South Africa. No, it's not even about that. That is only an example of what partnerships can be formed in South Africa. This talk is about you and me. It's about understanding the fact that you and I live in South Africa. Therefore, we inherently have the responsibility to shape the future of where we are heading as a people. But not only as a people, as a united people. And that is regardless of any differences, any upbringings that we have, we have absolutely no right to judge any single person on the face of this planet. But what we do have the right to do is respect and learn. And by that, uniting and shaping the future of South Africa. Is this the future? That vision that you saw in your time machine? Well, that's up to you. Thank you.